I speak to you in the name of God, Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier. Amen. We're celebrating the Epiphany today, the, the day when we recall the arrival of the Magi to celebrate the birth of Jesus. There are all sorts of interpretations of what their arrival meant, what their gifts might represent, what the star in the sky <clears throat> could have been, lots of thoughts and discussion about all of this. And if this is important for you, then dig right into it as well. Dig out the astronomy charts, study up on camel husbandry, remember the names of the Magi, even though they were named much later. Determine which planets might have aligned to produce the, the bright star in the night sky. Consider the value of the gold on today's markets, or the frankincense, or the myrrh. If this feeds your faith in God, then this is wonderful. Bring it on. It may not surprise you, though, to know that I'm much more focused upon the journey of those magi. I'm much more interested in what it was about that great light in the night sky that caused them to pack up their pilgrimage gear and head out the door to see where it would lead. I'm much more interested in that journey across hundreds of kilometers and how that changed them, how it affected them, awakened them, fed them, how it transformed them. I am much more interested in wondering about what they were looking for, because it might just be the same thing that we are looking for here this morning and in our world of now 2021. For like us, those faithful night watchers had seen a great light, and it caused them to look for the truth of the Christ with us, to discover more about the height and depth of God's relationship with us, to recognize that the Holy Spirit still moves like wind and fire in this world, even now, even here, even with us. For that great light that those stargazers witnessed long ago was not just for that time, but is a light that continues to call us now, even now, to wisdom and to hope, that continues to call us to step from the darkness, that continues to call us closer and deeper, that continues to call us to profound change and renewal. A friend of mine, the, the Reverend Louise Peters, wrote this poem entitled, Welcome Wordless Word of God. See if it speaks to you about the coming of Jesus Christ, the Word of God into this world, into our living, into our souls. She wrote, Frail, fragile light, you pierce through the dark, cutting through barricaded doors, finding a way through the pitch and inky shadows of a world that shouts, no room, silently piercing through the cold abyss with a pure, warm, holy, sparkling love, faster than speed. You, holy light, break in, beam through, you shine. Cold is now warm, lost is now found, fear is now hope. Shine again in our world. Come find your way with us again. We are a people who live in darkness, longing to see, to feel your great light. Darkness did not overcome you then. Darkness will not overcome you now. Tiny babe, be born anew. Shine once more in radiance of glory that transforms the darkness of our world our souls. Flicker us, flame us, gentle us, back into God's heart of hope. Let love shine again. Birth that is stronger than death, babe that is wordless word of God, divine logos, divine light, come. Shine into the shadows of our fears, our broken hearts, our fractured world. Shine that we may remember how how we are loved and made for love.
tiny one of God, fierce, fragile light, shine. Epiphany is a time to focus on the light of God that comes to us, sometimes in the dark night of the soul, sometimes in the darkest times of our lives, sometimes in the darkest places of this world, sometimes when we feel more lost or forgotten or alone. For this Christ child came not just to receive the gifts offered by a band of wealthy magi. He came that pilgrims of faith, like them, like us, might discover that there is light in this world that continues to shine out and invite us closer. There is a light in this world that shines to a much greater purpose and meaning, to holiness and to wonder, that speaks to our very soul and reason, a light that flickers amongst us to point us to what is most important, a light that shines, that reminds us that we are forgiven and loved and blessed, a light that shines, that calls us to live in response to the glory of God, not hiding away our faith, a light that reveals that God is fully connected to this world and to our lives, and we honor God amongst us by the way that we live and love and pray and act. That light shone out 2,000 years ago, but continues to shine out even today. That light changes us. It changes our perspective. It changes what we search for most in this world. It changes us to seek out pilgrimages and holy moments. It changes us to be born of the Holy Spirit, filled with new life and a blessed new soul. I've walked on a few pilgrimage routes over the years. The most important thing that I've learned on those routes was that the path or the route or the destination or the place was not all that important. What was most important was the searching for light along the way, seeking out that star, that fire, that peace, that presence, that voice, that Christ child, that wind of the Holy Spirit to guide and to slow down and to listen. Discovering on a pilgrimage or even in our everyday life that our soul craves a deep and purposeful listening for the voice of God, which comes in whispers, stars, people, prayer, meditation, hope, peace, and a universe of other ways. I'm convinced that those magi were searching for such a thing when they set out to follow a light that they discovered in the sky, but even more so in the deepest and most profound part of their lives. May we too, even in these pandemic times, seek to follow this light that still shines on dark nights in holy places and burning bushes near and far. Amen.